Hello everyone, welcome to William and the Magic Box. Today on our show, we are going to have Jason. Jason is from Florida in the USA. So let's see what Jason has to say. Enjoy the interview. Great, how are you doing today, Jason? I'm very well, how are you doing today? Good, it's very nice to see you. You too, thank you so much for taking the time today for the interview, thank you. Absolutely, my pleasure. Jason, so just before we start our game, tell me, um, where are you from? So I am from Atlantic Beach, Florida, in the USA. This is a small beach community on the east coast of Florida. <clears throat> We're very close to St. Augustine. I don't know if you've ever heard of the city of St. Augustine. St. Augustine is actually the oldest uh, settlement in the United States. It wasn't a British settlement. It was a Spanish settlement. Um, so it's the oldest city, a Spanish settlement. It's about, we're about 30 miles north of there. I see. And uh, <coughs> what's, the best, what's the best part of living in Atlantic Beach? Well, I really enjoy the fact that it has sort of, we're, we're it's got a small town vibe. It's a very um, laid back beaches community, but it's also close to a fairly large city. It's about 20 miles east of Jacksonville, which is a pretty big city in, in the state of Florida. and. In the summer, we have a pretty good um, tourism, and so um, it kind of has the, the best of both worlds. It's a quiet, uh, sort of laid-back atmosphere, but it also has sort of the, the the energy of a bigger city at different times in the year. So I like that. I enjoy that about it. How far are you from the beach? Two blocks. Two city blocks. <laughs> oh my god, you are so lucky. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great. I, 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 this is where I grew up. I've come, I've, I haven't lived here consistently my whole life, but I ended up coming back here and I love it here. Um, I, lo I, I live on the beach. I spend a lot of, I walk my dog on the beach. I jog on the beach. I spend a lot of time on the ocean. So I don't know how I would be able to live somewhere that wasn't close to a, a large body of water. I think I'm very um, accustomed to that. So. <laughs> yeah, I love what do it. you do? What do you do for living, Jason? So I am actually just like you. I have a YouTube channel. Uh, I started about four years ago, and I do tarot. I do psychic readings. I do tarot readings. It's not really just a tarot channel anymore. It started out that way. Um, I do life coaching and and things to do with energy work. I see. And uh, yeah. tell me, how did everything started, uh, your YouTube channel? So it's kind of a crazy story. Um, for the, the first, you know, 20 years of my adulthood, I did, um, you know, of course, I went to college and was focused more on business and sales. And I were, ended up working the last few years of my life. I was working for my father's a, a successful entrepreneur, and I ended up working for his company, doing things that were paid the bills and were, were okay, but it, I wasn't feeling, it didn't feel like it was my, what I was here to do or it was my purpose. And I struggled a lot in my adult life with um, substance issue, abuse issues and addiction because I was sort of trying to quiet my mind and quiet, I was very sensitive, empathic, and I was, I was always trying to kind of push that down and suppress that energy within myself. And something happened around age 39 I, I had a really strong connection with with someone uh, with a with a I'm a gay man and I had a really strong connection with a friend that was very spiritual and it it helped me to kind of it kind of like brought me back to life it, it sort of snapped me out of something and I started to really take better care of myself and focus on my purpose as opposed to just kind of living like going through the motions and I when I stopped you know, abusing thing, abusing substances and st stop sort of suppressing my intuition, I had like an explosion of awareness. And that's what led me to doing the energy work and, and connecting and, and working as sort of a healer to help other people. I see. That was in 2018. 2018. I yeah. see. Okay, so through the game, I'm going to explore a little bit more about your channel, about <laughs> your career, okay? Mm-hmm. Are you ready to go on a beautiful journey through your memories life and to share your point of views? I am so ready. Welcome to William and the Magic Box. So I have here my lovely box. Full of random fun questions, okay? I'm just gonna play a song now just for us to move a little bit before the first question. 
Okay. Let's do it. Okay, Jason, so just before we start the game, through the journey, if there is a question that you don't want to talk about for some reason, you don't want to answer, I always can change, okay? It's all very friendly, okay. okay? Okay. First question for you is, which talent do you wish you had? Which talent do I wish I had? Um, well, I really love music. And although I love to sing, I've, I have sung at different times in my life, like when I was a kid in church, things like that. I'm not a very good singer. <laughs> I don't have a great voice. And I've always wished that I could sing, that I could sing better because I find music is so healing. And I've always, although I told you I'm a healer, I identify as a healer, but that's a way that I wish I could help people to heal through music. Yeah, absolutely. I think singing or just sometimes you don't even need to sing like as a professional, but sometimes when you sing in the shower yourself, you just, you know what I mean? It's kind of a therapy for yourself. It's, it well, brings cool. We all it sound brings... good in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I heard least... once? Once I heard that uh, when you sing, you pray twice. Yeah, it's true. I think it really engages your spirit, right? Absolutely. It, it really does. Even if you don't know how to sing, like my case, sometimes I find myself in the shower, like singing, screaming, but I'm there in my ward, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. I bet you sing better than you think. Mm, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Before the next question, as you're saying about uh, being a healer, helping people, yeah? When did you realize that? When was the moment that I said, okay, I, I have this gift or I, I came to this world for this reason, there was a situation like a particular one, or naturally we start feeling that, okay, I'm, I, I, I have this gift? Yeah, okay. Um, well, I think it's kind of twofold because as a young child, I realized that I had something different. Well, at least I thought in my mind I did. I remember when I was, my parents divorced when I was about three and a half years old. And I have strong memories of that time. And I can remember when my parents would fight at night, uh, when they would go to sleep, I would sneak into their bedroom and I would put my hands on their, on their heart because for some reason, I don't know if I saw it in a movie or something, but as a little three-year-old child, I thought that I had the power to heal their hearts with my hand. Wow. And then see, see the confirmation came because, you know, people go to bed mad and sometimes they wake up in the morning and they're not mad anymore. So in the morning we would be sitting at the table. I would be eating my, you know, my fruit loops or, you know, trip <laughs> my tricks with the, the bunny rabbit on the, on the box and they would be happy and in a good mood again. And so in my mind, I, that was a positive reinforcement that I believed I was healing them at night. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And so I always thought, felt that I had, I know it's so, so strange, right? But obviously, like I told you, I was so sensitive and felt I, I could walk into a room and feel the emotions coming off of other people and things that that was very uncomfortable for me. And so um, I began at a very early age as a teenager using drugs and chemicals to try to suppress my emotions. And so again, I had, I had the, this, some sort of strange awareness going all the way back, but uh, it really became, um, present when I was 39 years old and I and I met someone that we both just seemed to know each other or have something that almost felt past life or the connection felt very strong from from day, from day one and then in the workplace at my father's company it's a family business with about 35 employees I started bringing my cards oracle cards tarot cards in for myself on breaks and stuff but people would come into my office and ask to sit and, and ask me questions and I would read for them and they were always leaving amazed and it got to the point within a couple of weeks where i had co-workers lined up outside my cubicle because of they were telling everyone something's up with this guy he's connected he, he can see things you know it's, it's crazy they were like telling everyone in the building and another you know it was very strange and so that made me very it kind of recollected in my mind what had happened long ago and brought that all to the forefront and so that's how it started and uh, when this um, this situation was happening, for example, people realized that you you know could help them somehow. How was the approach of your family, your parents, regarding that? Well, I come from a somewhat religious family. Um, my my father's side of my family is, I guess, evangelical Christians, and my mother's side is also Christian, but they're more traditional. They're like Roman Catholic, so the more traditional Christian, the older Christianity. 
Uh, they both were, uh, I think, more less concerned about because you know there there are people who think that things like that are of the devil, like things like reading cards or psychic energy connecting to to people who have passed away. Uh, they knew that I was that I had a strong foundation of faith in God. I'm not religious, but I definitely feel connected to a higher power. And so I think that, you know, <laughs> they had already come to terms a long time ago with the fact that I was a gay man. So they knew my path was not going to be traditional in any sense. And they also saw the effect and impact I was having on the people around me and how positive it was and how I was helping people. And I think that was the key for them. The results spoke more. So it, they, they didn't have time to get caught up in how in the, in, in the ideas or the sort of things they had heard because they saw the results already instant, instantly. And because the results were so positive and they saw how I was helping people, it, they, they didn't really question it. They were, they were glad to see it. And I think they, that really inspired them. Amazing. Very good. Yeah, it was I great. Think it, I think it makes a difference for ourselves when our parents somehow they support or don't, don't they go, they don't go against it. You know what I mean? At least if right. they don't go against it, it's already a support, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I'll tell you, I was very lucky, William, because my parents were teenagers. They had me very young. They were high school sweethearts. Uh, my dad was 19 and my mom was 17 when I was born. So they were very, they were kids still. And although they didn't, they, they divorced probably mostly because of that. They were too young. But other than that, I was really fortunate. I've had really great parents. They did a great job for being so young. They've always been very supportive. And I'm really grateful. I've been very lucky, you know. I'll tell you something now, a coincidence. Um, I, my parents as well, they were very young. My mom was 18, my, my dad was a bit older, like 21. On their coincidence, they got divorced as well. <laughs> a bit mm -hmm. later, like in life, and now they're much happier now, you know what I mean? I think they, uh, but yeah, that's a coincidence between us. <laughs> Don't you, do you, do you have the same experience that even though they were young, they did a pretty good job? And, oh uh, my God, yes. Oh my God, yeah. yes. I wouldn't change, uh, 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 you know what I mean, anything, I, I guess. I think it was very funny as well, having young parents, because I had so many situations that they thought they were my, my brother, my sister. Um, I, I'm going to just share with you a, a brief like situation. I brought my mom to Europe uh, four years ago for her, actually her, her birthday today, actually. It's my mom's birthday today. Oh, so happy I, birthday, mom. <laughs> yes. So um, I brought her a few years ago for, to Portugal, like to Europe for the very first time. And we did like a tour around Europe. We went to Portugal, we went to Holland, and we went as well to Paris. And we were on the top of the Eiffel Tower. Yeah, me and my mom full of tourists, it was like uh, almost evening, like late afternoon. And uh, she was, at the time, she was, she was turning 51, 51 years old. And um, of course, so she was, we were kind of walking the top of the Eiffel Tower and there was a couple, uh, the lady, the, this couple, the lady, uh, like kind of crossed in front of me, between me and my mom, and her uh, boyfriend pulled her back and said to, to her, let her husband pass by. He thought that it was my mom's husband. And I look at him, I was like, she's my mom. And he was like, oh, I'm so sorry. And I was like, no, 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 no. It's her birthday. You made her day. It's fine. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Listen, I totally understand that 100%. I have the same problem. Um, it, when I was younger, like when I was a teenager, it really used to embarrass me because people thought she, my mom was my sister or yeah. probably my dad. But now I kind of, you know, I realize it makes her feel good to, that people think she looks so young and she is pretty young for, for being my, my parents. And yeah, it's, it's awesome. But it's also we're so lucky, I think, because although we had very young parents as, as children and maybe they weren't so ready now as adults, we get to be, you know, have a really close, different, a different type of relationship, I think, than most people have with their parents. And I'm really grateful for that. Absolutely. When I look back, I, I when I look back, I analyze the situation. I they were not ready. They were still, you know what I mean. They were get yeah. to know themselves. You know what I mean. When I look back, they totally. didn't know how to be parents. In, you know what I mean. I, when I look back, as a child, I didn't understand much. But now, when I look back, they were not. They were not ready to be. So now, my, my grandma. Yes. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I say now my 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 sister. She has a, a niece. I have a niece now, and my mom is the best grandmother ever because she now she's a proper. She knows how to be a grandmother. Do you know what I mean? I so love now that. She's well, yeah. Totally. That's what I was going to ask you when I started to interrupt. I was going to ask you if if you had. Well, see, with my parents, they they both remarried and had more children later when they were like in their in their late twenties and early thirties, and so. 
I was a little older than all the other siblings, obviously. And so I got to watch the way they were with them versus how they were with me. And they were such different parents with them. You know, everything was so serious. And um, it's like they broke it. They've got broken in with me <laughs> and made all the mistakes. And then they, they so it's, it's, it's interesting, though, because they have such different relationships with the other siblings than with me. I almost feel like my parents are my siblings. You know, they're like older brother and sister in a way. In a way. I mean, they are my parents, but I know what you mean. It's 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 strange. Oh my God. Oh my God, Jesus. It's so true. I just said, my God, my mom, she's done, she, both of them, they had already, they, they found different, uh, different partners. Saying that, um, you're so right. I met my, my, my dad um, once and I met his family. He got other kids as well. And I met his family, his... Um, and I went to have lunch with them for the first time when I met his wife. Mm. And uh, it was a bit tense, you know what I mean? Of course, I was meet for the first time. And when I was looking at my dad, like uh, the way he was interacting with his daughter, I was like, my goodness, he know now he knows how to be a dad. It's totally different approach. I said, my God, I didn't have that at the time when as a child. He was not ready at all. So I totally understand. Another funny story. Love it. My, my mom has, uh, my mom has a, a, a partner, a, bo a boyfriend. He's younger than me. <laughs> and my dad's wife as well is younger than me. So I go like, oh my God. So they were very young still. They had this young spirit, you know what I mean? Of being around young people. That's uh, right. what is, uh, what's fascinating. So yeah, that's uh, something hey, about listen. you. Understand, you understand very well what I'm talking about. You know very well, so. I get it. Listen, I'm 44. And I mean, I don't want to date someone 44 really that sometimes. <laughs> so I get it. When I'm 50, I'm probably not going to want to date someone who's 50, you know? <laughs> We need that young energy in our lives. No, it's but fun. seriously, I totally, I think that's great. You know, I think, and you know, I, I used to think that was so insane. The idea of like my, my dad's current wife is close. I think she might be closer to my age than to his. I'm not there. She's in between. And, um, but I get it. I think, you know, it, the no, age really is just a number, you know, as you, yeah. well, when, when you're younger, it's not right. When you're a teenager and maybe in your yeah. early twenties, but after about age 35, it's just a number, you know, <laughs> yeah, it really yeah. is. <laughs> so, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Interesting. We know very well what we are talking about. <laughs> Next question for you <laughs> is, Jason, who is your biggest hero? That's hard for me because I have so many heroes. I have, I, I'm a, I compartmentalize things like that and I have heroes for different things, right? Um, I would say at this time in my life, one of my biggest heroes is my grandfather who's passed away. He's no longer with me, but he, he's passed away. And um, I was so fortunate to be able to take care of him. I came, that's one of the reasons I came back here and live where I am. Uh, he had dementia. He was 97 and had dementia. And my grandmother couldn't take, handle him anymore. And so I came and I got to be with him about the last six months of his life. And um, it brought back a lot of memories from my childhood, spending that time with him. And I'm just, I was so grateful and so impressed with the kind of person he was. And I realized how many uh, difficult choices and sacrifices parent, fathers, grandfathers, they make in life, all parents. But for me, it was it was specific to him. And also that the times he, he, he was around, you know, he was born in 1918. And, you know, he, he was around for World War One, World War Two, all the way through the, the and I, the stories he used to tell and the wisdom he used to share. He's a hero of mine, probably more now than ever, because of what I do. I feel more connected to him, even though he's not alive. I can feel his influence over me, telling me th certain things to do. Not I don't hear him audibly, but I hear him in my heart. Like, I, I, I feel what he's saying. Do you know what I mean? And it's really, it's been great to have that experience. That's one of the benefits of what's happened to me is a lot of people who I love who have passed away, they feel just as much here as you and I talking right now. It's crazy. It's crazy, but it's it's true. It's my truth, you know? Absolutely. Very good, sweet. I think yeah. the connection with our grandparents is just unique and uh, they're always going to be our grandparents where we found find peace, where we find support, where we find yes. everything. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. I, I would say also, exactly, and for, for me, the thing is, I, like I told you, I, I made a lot of mistakes when I was younger, uh, in my early adulthood, because of who I was and what I was trying to push away. And I think he, he was always on my side. You know what I mean? Always on my side. 
no matter right, wrong. He would tell me I was wrong, right? But he was mm -hmm. always on my side. He always made sure I knew that he was cheering, rooting for me, that he was, he believed in me and that he knew I would be okay. But he would, he knew how to, he knew how to balance that. And I, I don't think there's anyone else in my life, family, friends, whatever, that's been that much of a supportive influence to me like that, so. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Next one, let's do it. Okay, Jason from Florida. Next question is, what made you laugh this week or this month? Something that's, super, okay, that was very funny. Um, kind of funny in a dark humor way. I was watching, there's a, there's a uh, show on here in the United States. Well, actually it's on, uh, yeah, on NBC in the United States. It's called The Thing About Pam. And Renee Zellweger, the actress, is playing a homicidal maniac in this uh, show that's based on something that really happened in, in life. And I was watching that uh, late last night and uh, she's very funny. It's so funny, the portrayal of this woman. I mean, it's really dark and very sad. <laughs> the person was truly <laughs> insane. But Renee Zellweger has a great, she brings the great humor to it uh, in a very sick way, but it's really funny. You should check it out. <laughs> we'll I think it's on the I think it's on the Peacock app internationally. Okay, I like her. I think she she's funny as well. I've seen her like in some um, playing um, in some movies, and it's just there's something about her that she can bring this naturally uh, the comedy so comedy. Yeah, she can be very fun. Just the way she, her uh, face expression can be very fun. Just look at her. Well, she's wearing a bodysuit, and she because she's plays someone who's about I think around 300 pounds. And uh, she's wearing a, a lot of prosthetics, but her eyes and the, the expression she can make, it's perfect. It brings through so much. It's really, really worth watching. Yeah, it's good. You're describing now, I can, I can picture her in front of me. It's crazy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Next one. Jason, before the next question, tell me a little bit about your YouTube channel. Uh, so I, I checked a little bit, actually. I could see that you kind of, you know, you take the tarot, but tell me a little bit about, walk me through one of your episodes on the YouTube channel. So basically what I do on my YouTube channel is, uh, and it's Ray of Light Tarot, R-A-Y-O-F-L-I-G-H-T Tarot, T-A-R-O-T, four words, Ray of Light Tarot. And what I do, you wouldn't believe because of the name of the channel, how many people think my name is Ray. <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> It's actually the reason I came up with the name was um, that there's a, a, so a song by Madonna called Ray of Light. Yes. And for some reason, that song was playing at a moment when I was trying to name the channel and it just came out. Um, but it's I do tarot mostly. That's what started it. It's like I said, I was do doing tarot and somebody at work or many people at work said, you know, I watch tarot on YouTube and you're 10 times better than a lot of these people. You're more pure what you're getting through and you should start a channel and so I did uh, in August of 2018 and by like October within like two months it had like 10,000 subscribers it just grew really fast really fast oh it was it was wow. very it felt very like kismet you know like fate um, what I was doing is I do uh, zodiac sign readings so I'll, I'll do readings for each of the signs you know um, like this month the sun is in uh, Pisces moving into Aries and uh, I'm sorry yeah oh yeah. And so, um, for example, I would do readings for each sign every month. So now would be March Pisces, March Aries, March Taurus. And uh, that way, if your sun or rising is in one of those, you would watch those specific signs. Then I would also do um, live broadcasts in which I would do um, what I'd call mini readings. So, for example, um, on Wednesdays, I would go live on, and do a, a broadcast where people could uh, send in a question, just one question, pull a few cards and give them a quick maybe three to five minute answer and, and do that for people about once a week, twice a month. And um, the other thing that I really like to do is collaborations. Um, I've done some courses and different um, groups and things on Zoom and different places for um, people. I also do some collaborations on my channel and my friend's channel. Her name, the one that I've done the most is uh, Jai. She's a, she's, she was kind of a spiritual mentor for me. And she and I do intuitive readings where we kind of take, like hit off of each other's intuition together uh, to give people guidance. And a lot of my, my viewers seem to really like those too. Um, but what I've done since, I've, I've kind of been on a hiatus for my channel the past few months because uh, it just felt, you know, I don't know how it is for you, but 
with what I was doing, especially energy work, it can drain your energy. And uh, I needed a break. And I have a, I have a pretty good client base from the channel so that I can go, I can sustain my income through the, through my client base. And so I've been doing that the past few months and it's time I am, it is time for me to come back. In fact, this is probably one of the signs of, of, do, of coming back was you asking me to do this. I thought, you know, it is about time for me to get back on the channel more. And so um, I also, with my clients that I, that I see privately that usually find me through the channel or through Facebook, um, I do also like life coaching sessions. So all of that's kind of started as just tarot, right? I'm very good. Next yeah. question is, what is your favorite kitchen is male? Oh, I think it'd be a tie between um, cookies and my grandmother's. Um, she, my grandmother cooks a really good Irish beef stew. Uh, and that smell is very specific. And so I love that smell, but probably cookies, like chocolate chip cookies. That's a really good smell when somebody's making chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> Coffee's great too. Coffee's do you like there. Do you like cooking? Um, yes and no. Uh, I enjoy cooking specific things. Okay, if it's if it's a, a one-time thing, I might enjoy going into a detailed recipe. And I like to cook things that are that are fast, easy. I'm not someone who who likes to play with recipes and get in the kitchen a lot. I like eating. I love food, and I like eating. But I need someone to cook for me, usually. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So my, my husband, my future husband, better be able to cook because I'm not that good. <laughs> Very good. Very good. The message is out. <laughs> yeah. Out there. <laughs> Next one. Okay, Jason. Next question is, what's the biggest difference between you and your best friends? probably what I do for a living. Um, I have a lot of people I, I work with in sort of the spiritual world, but most of the people that I've, that I've grown up with and am closest to are, you know, not those type of people. They're, they're really not into the woo woo stuff and they're much more earthbound. Like they, they like sports, they like, you know, much more normal things and think in a much more linear logical way even my gay friends are like that a lot of them are very you know um like accountants pharmacists um <laughs> you know you know what i mean just completely different type of career choices and uh talents different gifts and talents than me so i'll probably say when it comes to our our life choices and our career career the way we're career bound is very different very good so you say about being gay did you always have the support of your family Yeah. Yes. Um, I don't, I wouldn't say I always had the uh, understanding or agreements from my family, but I think they were all, I would say they were always supportive of me. Um, again, my family is pretty religious and so they have their own issues when it comes to certain things. But you know, the, the thing about me is I started coming out when I was 19, coming out of the closet and I just, I, I, I respect that everyone's, you know, kind of got their own journey and some people don't come out until much later. Some people come out when they're six years old. I did know, I think I knew at a very young age that I was different. I didn't know it was called gay or homosexual, whatever you want to call it. I knew though, I knew I was different and I knew what I was, you know, we know what we like, what we're attracted yeah. to for the most part. And, um, but it's a, and like I said, I, I respect everyone's journey, but you know why I had to come out? by the time I was just an early adult is because when you're in the closet, you get very, you can get very, because that's what you're lying. You're publicly lying. And so what happens is the longer you stay in the closet, you can unintentionally become a really good liar. That's not a good thing. And my dad was pretty good. Like he, he could be a tough dad, but he, he was very loving to me as a child. The one thing he always punished me for was lying. He couldn't stand lying. I could get away with pretty much anything as long as I was honest. And so that really bothered me that I was not being honest about who I was from the time I was a teenager. And so I had to kind of get, get that off my chest pretty early with people that were in my daily life, at least. But I was gay. And um, like I said, for me, 
that's a question I have to say, like I said, it's no judgment because we all have our own path. But when, when I usually am meeting guys and I date and looking at dating someone, if they took a, if they like just recently came out of the closet and they're my age or they took a really long time, that's a red, I have to be honest, that is a red flag for me because what it tells me is not that they want to lie, but that they've gotten really good at it for a long time. And you have to take that into account, right? I mean, so yeah, that's I just think. something that kind of clicks in my mind. I, I think it's always a relief for all of us when we come out, when we, when we own our truth. And I respect anyone, like I said, their own journey. But I would say to anyone who's been thinking about it, you'll feel so much better once you get that out. And, and if you're worried about someone not loving you, they're not loving you anyway because they're not loving the true you the way you are. So they're not loving you if they don't know who you are. Very good message. I love that. I think it says a lot. It's just yeah. encouraging people to be themselves. It doesn't matter what. Absolutely. I know sometimes it's not easy because of religion, because of society, because of family. But you need to face it. You need to, you need to be yourself for you to, it, to be happy. Don't you agree? Don't, William, don't you agree? It doesn't get easier. It's Putting it off is not going to make it easier. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Right. It and it's no. the same with anything in your life that you're sort of holding on to. That's just yeah. one example. Same thing for addiction. It's all about secrets. And, yeah. uh, you know, they say in recovery, we're only as sick as our secrets. And so anything you're holding on to and keeping secret, if you can speak it and say it out loud, it kind of loses its power over you. You know, that's been my experience. And even, even though if you're not prepared to, you know, to face society, family, whatever, talk to someone, try to, to understand, try to open up with a friend, someone that you can trust, and you can kind of build up this confidence. At one point, you will be ready for it. You don't need to yeah. go straight away, okay, I am this, or I am that. Don't need to. Go slowly. Right. Educate yourself a little bit or prepare yourself, you know, because sometimes when you say, oh, you need to come out, people, they think, okay, I just need to wake up one day and tell the world that I am gay or I am this or I'm that. Don't need to. Just, no, you uh, can test the water. Yourself. Test the water. Yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, I think everyone knows, uh, you know, their, their own way of approaching life or dealing with their own uh, family or friends or whatever. So, you know, try to, to organize yourself in the best, the better way that you're going to educate other people as well around you and everything's gonna be fine for sure right i agree i think it's important to sort of build your confidence like i know i i came out to front to my closest friends and to people that i knew i could trust much earlier than coming out to like my parents and my my extended family that had to happen over time but i think the sooner the better it, because yeah. it will empower you a lot I would, I, it really is empowering to do that and saying that as well all of us we have different family, we have different friends, we have different people around us, you know, so you find your own balance, your own way to do not be yourself. I think you are the only person who can start that. Of course, you you hear other stories and kind of you can um, you can connect yourself with the story as well, but you are the one who is going to give the step, start the step, you know what I mean? I think that's... Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. And I'll tell you, I know someone who is still in the closet that I've been trying to counsel a little bit. And he actually, one of the, the things that makes me feel so bad is he, he lost a relationship because of that. The, the partner was just tired of lying, tired of hiding and didn't understand. And that's one of the reasons that I mentioned what I said is, you know, you don't want to become so accustomed to living a lie that it becomes like you're numb to it, right? It shouldn't feel comfortable to lie. It shouldn't feel right or easy. And so um, you've got to, it's almost about, for, for me, it's like, that was, that was like, I had to choose myself because it did it almost doesn't matter whether anyone else can accept it or not or love you or it's not about them right and nowadays as well with i think the words even though there's still a lot of to to people to be accepting but I, but i think the world is going in a better direction i think people so much with, uh, yeah with the technology i think nowadays there's no way there is everything's there everything's exposed you know what i mean there's no oh. way even though those people who the judgmental people, the people who are against those situations, they, they don't they, they cannot hide anymore. Everything is there. There are a lot of support yeah. around there for sure. We've come a long way in a, in a very short time for sure. We still have a lot to you know to catch up, but we are going to go in a great direction. Absolutely. I have this feeling, I have this feeling personally. I agree. Yeah, I agree. I have three questions left for you, okay? Let's okay. do it.
Jason, being a being a, a, a mm. coach, you know, and also being a healer, um, of course, you deal as you mentioned before. I'm sure you deal with a lot of emotions, a lot of energy as well. Sometimes I'm sure a lot of uh, positivity, a lot of negativity as well. Of course, all of us we have that to share. Saying that, how do you manage to find a way to not to take this and en this energy back to your private life how can you how there is a way a mechanism that you use you go like okay of course we are compassionate i'm sure you are as well when you you put yourself in your client's shoes for sure but of course you know energy is always there and how do you find a way to not to get too involved that it maybe it can affect your private life William, that is such a great question. And it's a great question for all of us, not just people who do what I do, but everyone who works with other people or, you know, deals with, has a channel and deals with a lot of viewers energy. We, it's important that people realize that we are all, all we are is energy. Um, you know, the way it projects and the way we experience it is one thing, but we are all here. We're just energy. Everything is energy. And what I've learned, you can't avoid it completely. You can't avoid the impact completely. And especially, yes, doing what I do, I, I will absorb the other person's energy. In fact, when I go to, if I was reading for you right now, one of the intentions I would say at the beginning of the reading is thank you to the universe for allowing me to connect and to absorb your, because I need to feel your energy. I need to be able to feel what's going on within your heart space. So on the one hand, I have to literally choose to absorb your energy to protect myself from being weighted down. There are, there are modalities that you can use and I think it works differently for everybody you have to find what works best for you for me one of the things I do I meditate a lot and I also do a lot of visualization and I believe our words have power so I, I the spoken word intention is so important what I usually do is I visualize myself protected I visualize myself sort of surrounded by a, a like a, a screen of light, a bubble. So, so it's kind of I, sometimes a shield that sort of expands and goes in a circle all around me. I, I use different things depending on what I feel like. And it's just something about the visualization of that protectedness before going in to start these things is very important and seems to help. But you also have to remain open hearted to again, receive and connect. I also think because our words have so much power, it's important to speak it, to say, you know, thank you. I don't, this goes back to my early childhood sort of religious upbringing, because I know Christians talk, uh, evangelical Christians talk about prayer as in, instead of asking for something you need, thank God for it ahead of time almost. So I kind of do that with my God, with source, the universe. I always sort of say, thank you. Instead of give me this, I say, thank you for this. Like I already have it, I'm calling it in. And so I usually say, thank you for allowing me to connect to William's energy to, to help him to heal. And also thank you for protecting me from carrying that energy with me. Thank you for keeping me safe, keeping us both safe within an unconditional love bubble so that we can have an authentic uh, exchange and both come away from it without carrying any residual energy that we don't need. You know, so both those things will work the best for me. But hey, like I said, I had to take a break from YouTube. So nothing is 100%. Nothing's going to gonna all i mean because we are energy and because we're kind of meant to absorb each other's energy to a certain extent um it's about preparing protecting and then having some kind of after you know cleansing uh sort of a almost like a cool down process like you warm up before a workout and then you cool down same thing with readings i kind of do that, that that on my own <laughs> and on my own little uh personal personal level so but I would tell anybody out there who's just starting out doing spiritual work, psychic work, energy work, find what works for you because what works for you may not work for me and vice versa. Um, grounding has been a, a big thing for me, going to the beach and walking in my bare feet, walking around, just sitting in the yard. I like to do a lot of meditation out, outdoors. I'm an earth sign and uh, Virgo and earth signs a lot of times I notice more than almost any other sign really doing grounding is the big one for, so if you're an earth energy, Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn, you might really look at doing um, grounding, earthing type energy, so. Very good. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. Sure, absolutely. Next question is, what makes you really angry? Ah, so what makes me, the, so let me preface by saying, I because of what I do, you have to be a compassionate person to be able to, 
I think work as, as as a healer, but especially as a conscious healer, where you're aware that you're trying to help people heal. So I'm pretty compassionate, and I'm pretty I'm a pretty compassionate person, and I try to always be conscious of not judging other people. So because of that, I think partly because of that, one thing that really makes me angry is when I see people who lack compassion and people who lack the ability to have empathy. When I see people who are quick to judge other people, um, quick to self-centeredness, that kind of energy, that's very offensive to me because um, maybe because of what I do, I just feel like we all need to take a little more time to be, to try to put ourselves in other people's shoes and, and, and be more compassionate and empathetic just in our daily lives. And I see so little, it seems like there, there are some people, there's a certain percentage of people that are becoming more empathetic and more empathic and more compassionate. And then there's a whole other chunk of people that are going the opposite direction. Like, and that, that worries me. That's that it angers me. And it worries me to see that while on one hand, people are, some people are becoming more compassionate. There's also a tendency. We have a tendency to want to, because of social media and the connectedness of the world, we have a tendency to want to consciously connect to people who are like us. That's natural. But when we do that too much, we can become very harsh and critical of people who aren't like us. And I think it's so important for people to do, to, to purposefully reach out and try to get to know people who aren't like us, who don't think like us, you know, and put ourselves in other people's shoes instead of being such, pardon me, a-holes and getting in our own little echo chambers. And uh, it's, it's not, you know, it's fine to have compassion for people that are just like you, but that's easy. It's easy to have compassion for people who think like me and are like, but how good am I at having compassion for people who don't think like me, right? Who are the opposite of me and who think I'm an idiot or that I'm going to hell or that I'm, you know, that my life is not even worthy of being here. Those are the kind of people that, that, that we need to practice compassion and practice patience with um, in, my, in my point of view. And I think it's very frustrating when people don't do that. Or there's also, I, I seem to notice this group of people or this, this tendency nowadays to be, I don't mind ignorance because ignorance just means you need education, right? Educating. What I don't like is people who are proud of their ignorance. That's, be, that's a thing I don't understand. It's, you know, how can you be proud <laughs> of all the things you don't know? Like that's, that's weird to me, this thing about people, they're really proud of that. They're like, no, I, I don't, I don't want to know about you. I don't want to learn about you. And that's it. And that's it. Well, that's really sad. That's really sad to me, you know, to be proud of that. Absolutely. I just, and I think what you just said now, when, you, um, as you said, we need to be compassionate for people. They are different of us. They don't agree with the same topics, this and that. And also need to um, um, understand and memorize and, and understand that we need those people as well, you know, to see the contrast between us. Imagine if everyone loved you, if everyone, you were always happy, it would be boring, you wouldn't learn anything. So just try to understand that those people, they, you need them as well for us to understand, for us to see that whatever you do, we could be the perfect person in the world, but there's always someone that's not going to dislike you or not. For some reason, it's like, I, I call that, it's like a spiritual thing, you know? There's no mm, reason. It is. It this is spiritual. Person, that's this person never done anything bad to you. You never done anything bad to this person. There's no way, but there's something there in there that doesn't match. And it's okay. It's okay. It's, it's magical. Absolutely. It's magical. And we need that as well to make us wonder, to understand, to get to know ourselves better. And so you need this as well. You need to understand sometimes. Don't, don't take personal. Just try to understand. Can I tell yeah. you, and I, I really think this is important that I say this because something a lot of people have asked me because my family, is, uh, most of the people in my family have a, a different political stance than me. And they've often asked me, what made you be this way? Is it because you're gay? No, it's not. You know what it is? It is because I'm gay, but it's not the reason they think. You know, when I was a child growing up, I had an experience that I knew I was gay, but nobody around me knew. So I was a part of a minority, but unlike, for example, being Latino or African-American, it's not on, it doesn't show on the outside. So the people around me didn't know I was that minority. So I could hear what they thought of that minority when they talked about gay people. They didn't know they were talking about me, but I knew. So when I grew up hearing people talk about how 
horrible gay people were and how wrong and da, 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 blah, 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 blah. I knew because I knew who I was, I knew their opinion was wrong. And because of having that experience, I automatically, when I would hear people talk about white people talk about black people or any other different minority or type of person that they don't know or understand, I automatically knew they probably don't know what they're talking about. Do you know what I mean? Because of Absolutely. my experience being gay. So yeah. I, I think it, it was because I was gay that I had a tendency to think differently, but it wasn't for the reason they thought. It was because I, I saw how wrong people were about that. So I tended to presume you're probably wrong about almost everything you think you know, and I'm going to go out and learn. I'm going to go and experience and learn for myself before I make a choice or a decision or, or, or form an opinion. And I try to do that about everything in my life. I research, I study, I don't just parrot what I hear people saying that I like or that think I, I think think like me. I want to learn it and feel my way through it with my heart and what feels right. And that's so important to me. And I wish more people would do that. A lot of people do that. I'm not saying I'm not any better than anybody else. I, that's just my experience. But I wish more people who didn't have that experience would want to do that just automatically. You know what I mean? To be sort of give people the benefit of the doubt until they know for sure. Absolutely. Two questions left. Oh, okay. Jake. Let's do it. <laughs> Next question is right. Um, I think this one we talk about, but anyway, let's go for this one. Um, what makes you laugh out loud? My best friend Mike makes me laugh out loud. Uh, <laughs> my best friend Mike has been my best friend since we since I was 19, and um. We so we've lived through a lot of experiences together, and you know we can almost finish each other's sentences. And uh, we have, all, you know, you know when you know someone so well, you almost develop your own language. And I've looked sometimes back. At, I was looking the other day back through a text uh, thread, a thread of text between us, and I think anyone else tried to read that text, they would not know what we were saying. They would think we were speaking another language, but. And just thinking about that, it was making me laugh out loud because it, we're, we're not even using words. It's like U H H O, but it all made sense. And so I love that about old friends who you have that deep connection with. They, they know you better than you know yourself sometimes. That it's Absolutely. almost like you form your own your own language, your own experience. Um, and I, I appreciate things like that. Totally agree. Totally agree. Ready for the last one? Yeah, let's do it. Like Wait, last question. But before the last question, Jason, um, people watching the interview, let's say people that, um, you know, uh, they they uh, they have this gift of healing, of, you know, helping people in a psychic way as well, but they haven't started the journey yet for one reason or another. Yeah, as you're saying before as well. What would be your best piece of advice for those people or encourage them? Okay, you know, I can I can't this word for this. I can see that I am able to do that. But they, yeah. for some reason, they haven't started yet. What would be your best piece of advice to those people? Okay. Another great question. I'm, I, I feel like this, this, this entire interview was divinely guided because I know people have this, this exact question and I think it's so good that, you, that you're asking me this. Um, and it, it was the same issue for me too. I think when we awaken spiritually and we get on a path of healing, we are automatically sort of turned on to certain gifts that we may have and they also get turned up. Like the, it's like the volume getting turned up or the power. They become, they're like on high, on max all of a sudden. But what holds us back is our own doubts. And also a lot of people in spiritual communities or, or on a spiritual journey, they think they have to heal more before they start helping others. In other words, I know I could do this and help someone, but I'm not healed enough yet. I have to heal myself first. BS, that's not true. Because I'm not healed 100%. I'm not, a, I'm not a, you know, when we're healed 100%, we're going to be, in spirit we're not going to be in the physical body anymore you can't be one we're not perfect we're not here to be perfect but the time to start doing the work of healing and working with others is now it's not tomorrow it's not when you're more here it's right now so if you have some gift that you know you can use to help others but you're putting it off because you think you're not ready or that's that's up here trust your heart and use it because the delay is not just hurting you it's hurting the person who needs your help Right. So don't stop. Don't 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 hesitate to start helping people just because of your own 
uh, fears, right? It's time when it's time, it's time. And if you feel that pull to do something with energy work and to especially to be a healer and help people, don't delay and don't don't lie to yourself. That's a lie we tell ourselves. I'm not ready. You know, in your heart, you wouldn't be being called to do it. And uh, if it's not about your lack of readiness, it's about the need out there and the need is there. It's waiting and now is the time. Do not use that as an excuse. That's not a, not a good excuse. Great. There's always people that will that will benefit no matter where you're at on your healing. Someone will benefit more. Let's say you're at, you feel like you're only 20% healed if we're gonna put it in percentages. And you don't wanna be trying to help people when you're only 20% healed. The people that the universe will bring into your awareness they will benefit more than anyone else from someone at your level of healing because you're still at 20%. Those people that are going to come to you are going to need someone right there at 20% that understands their plight or that's where they, that gets where they are to help them. Trust. You've got the more you trust and, and lean into your gifts, the better you'll, the better results you're going to have. That's what I, I would say. Right, um, um, Jay, so next question is, would you rather be invisible or be able to fly? And what would you do? I don't know, I really, I'll tell you, that's a tough one because <laughs> <laughs> it, I would love to be able to fly because a lot of, I don't know, do you ever have dreams where you can fly? I love yeah. that, I love, I love <laughs> flying in my dreams. It's, it's like one of my favorite things to do whenever I'm having it. And I, I lose, I've gotten to a point where I have a lot of lucid dreams, which, which you know, you're, where you're aware that you're dreaming. And so often I start wanting to fly because it's, just, it's so cool. And I love when I'll be flying over like a city in my dream and I realize I'm doing it and I'm dreaming. It's just so exciting. So that's a tough one. I guess um, invisibility is pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> uh, if I had to choose one or the other, I would probably choose uh, to fly. And the reason is because I think if I could be invisible, I would be way too tempted to spy on people and hear what they say about me. And, and that can never, that's what, you know, the, it reminds me of the old saying, you learn in recovery and in therapy, what other people think about me is none of my business. <laughs> it's true. Learn. It's really true. And um, I don't want to, so I, would, I wouldn't want to give in to that temptation. So I think I'll pick flying because I, lo I love the idea of being able to fly. So. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes as well, when you are invisible, you'll be so tempted to do things or to go places that you shouldn't go or even get closer to. So that's uh, mm -hmm. scary. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think invisibility presents way too much of a moral dilemma for me. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll stick with the flight. <laughs> flight okay, sounds Jason. good. It's not the end yet. Let's play now the word association game, okay? I'm going okay. to give away some words and just tell one word that comes to your mind. Quick thinking, okay? So, I hope you are enjoying the interview. Before we do the word association game, don't forget to give a like, don't forget to share this video, and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Just click on the bottom right there. Thank you so much and enjoy the word association game. Money. Power. Family. Love. One word for life. Breath. One word for sex. Heat. One word for love. Happiness. Politics. Tired. <laughs> Religion. Overblown. Fear. Useless. Friendship. Hopeful. Desire. Everything. Desire Regret. is everything. Regret. <sighs> Motivational. Success. Imperative. One word for wish. Luck. Happiness. The ocean. One word for Atlantic Beach. Easy. <laughs> One word for Florida. Crazy. One word for USA. Crazier. <laughs> One word for a spiritual healer. Unconditional. And the last one now. Um, Ray of Light Tarot. The name of your channel. One word. 
destiny. Amazing. Let's pretend now I'm going to meet your best friend for a coffee, and I'm going to ask your best friend, define Jason in one positive words and one negative words. What your best friend will define yourself? Okay, so the positive word he would use to define me would be loyal. And I think the negative word he would use to define me would be either, it'd be a tie between contradictory or <clears throat> justification, because I can justify almost anything if I think long enough about it. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's play now Jason and the magic box, and you can ask okay. me a question. So, you can ask me a question now, Jason. So the question I'd like to ask you is because I believe we all have a destiny and I don't think we always figure out our destiny when we're a teenager or 18, but I think it always reveals itself at some point in time. Do you know what your destiny is? Do you believe you know what your destiny is here? And if so, what is it? And if not, what do you think it could be? Good question. Good question. I would like to answer this um, a, a, this question in two different um, answers. There actually there is something that um, I was talking to a friend a few years ago. Uh, do you know sometimes you think about something about yourself, about your life, and you go like, okay, I was born for this. Was, the first answer is, I when I when I when I think about myself, I came to this world, Jason, to work hard. That's something that I learned very early age, and I love it. Mm -hmm. Actually, saying that I love it. I love the, I love working. I love being proactive. I love being able to, you know, to to leave working. I, it's tiring. I love being. I love going to bed tired. I love like look back my day, say, oh my God, I've done a lot today. I worked. So it's something that uh, naturally I realize my life is. Whatever I'm gonna get one day, whatever I'm gonna go, but I will work hard. I will work. You know, there's no way yeah. of me do anything in my life without work. Yeah, that's the first answer. The second answer is, I was born to do this. What I'm doing right now, this channel brought me so much. It still bring me every single day. Jason, you cannot. You have no idea. I go to bed thinking about this channel. Oh, I, I love that. I wake up every morning, literally, when I open my eyes, it's about the channel. I, I'm having a shower, I go to work, I talk to friends, I'm, everything I do in my life, there's always this involved in myself and have no idea. So that's the second answer. I came to this world to do this, you know, I, it's so it's so powerful. When I, when I, when I, um, Fun enough when I through my life when I talking to, when I was talk, I still talk to people and people were like my God I wake up every day I I love my work I love what I do I love this and I, I believe that's us everyone we have different talents and we can follow different talents and we can still be happy I totally yeah. agree that I think you know it doesn't matter what you do sometimes life takes a direction that you're not expecting you didn't wish that but you feel happy still you enjoy your life. But I was always asking myself, my God, I'm not sure if I'm still, I, 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 I always been so uh, fascinated about those people when you're telling me that, I was like, my God, I could see their eyes shining when they were like, my God, I, would, I go to work, I don't see as work, I see as, a, I don't see as joy, I see as, as fun, because I have so much fun. And I admire that, I was like, oh my God, how is this feeling? How is this feeling yeah. for you to go to work and, um, and have this joy? And I always thought to myself, my God, I I hope one day, and I knew it. I, I remember a few years ago, I told my friend, I was talking about that, and I was talking about this situation. And I told him, I said, look, I cannot answer this question now. I know, I can, I, I, I'm going to be very honest. I cannot answer, but I know it will come one day. I remember the, I exactly the day when I told him, I said, look, I don't know. I, I still, because I remember talking about job, about work and everything. And he was saying, really, you could be doing this and that. I said, no, I, I, I could do different things and I'll still be happy. But I don't know. I, I haven't found this, this path yet. Now, since 2020, when the world went upside down, when I was started doing this, This I literally came along, as you said about you're in the beach and you feel yourself. I was running. I was literally was in the park running, and suddenly this idea came along. I was like, oh my god! I even mm. I, my world stopped. I remember for a few seconds I was like, I, it was so powerful. The, the moment that I never forget. 
And since that day, um, Jason, I can tell you with my eyes shining, I was born for that. I was born for this. I I think I don't know where it's gonna take. I don't. I'm, I'm sure this is gonna go the different direction. Or the project's gonna come as well. Things gonna happen. But I must tell you something. This is something that I was born. I meant to be. I meant to to do this because it's. Um, you know, I forget I'm recording. I forget sometimes I could do, I could do that for like 24 hours because. I just love to connect with people around the globe and to hear their stories and see their, you know what I mean? They they share in their life, their their memories, their challenges, their mistakes, or their joys, their success, everything. I feel the most fortunate person in the entire world that I'm able to be um, connect with people around the globe and doing this interaction because it's something that fits me, fits my energy, fits my soul, fits my my day, fits me, it yeah. fits me. You know what I mean? So the, totally. the answer for that is those two answers. Something that I work hard, I need to work hard for everything in my life, but at the same time as well, I can tell now that uh, um, this question that I always had in the back of my mind, and I knew it would come one day, as I told my friend a few years ago, and I found it, and it's here, and I'm ah. living now. The, I'm living it, and I, I've got like my, my skin now just shining. Like, like goosebumps, how, right? How, Yes, totally. I love that. It's... Can I tell you, William, that's what you just did. I don't know what the right word is for sexy, but that's sexy. Sec that to me, living your purpose, knowing why you came here and knowing that you're doing what, what you came here to do and being grateful for it, that's what's sexy. That's sexy to me. That turns me on. That literally turns me on. And I just, I love that. It makes me excited. It makes me excited. And so that's awesome. I love that. Oh, thank you so much. That's thank so you. cool. And it's, 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 it's uh, if I, I always tell people, if I would see somebody doing that, like in another platform, I would go like, oh my God, I would love to be doing that. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm doing it and I'm doing it. So I, I just love it. I think it's, uh, I'm so grateful every single day, uh, Jason, I, every single day. And once I heard as well that um, there was an actress said, um, somebody told her that luck, it's, um, it's hard work to be, to be lucky, you know, and it makes sense because when you are people, being luck is hard work because luck comes, but you need to work hard. It doesn't, you know what I mean? It's not just when, stuff. when you yeah. feel it, when you feel yeah. it in here, ex that excitement about what you're doing, it's contagious. It's you're going to get good results. It's contagious. Yeah. So that's why it's so important for people to lean into that. Like I was telling you, like, if you feel like you should be a healer, don't slow it down. Don't, yeah. don't slow the, don't let your fears slow the universe down. You just feel through it. And if you do what you feel, that's contagious. It's going to help people. It's going to help you. It all is going to work for the greater good. And I can feel when you're talking about it, the excitement, the gratitude, and that yeah. combination is magic in a, it's, it's lightning in a bottle. It's, it's, that's what sec, that's sexy. That's what creates, right? So that's Indeed. that's exciting. I'm excited for you. Oh, thanks so that. much, Jason. Thanks that's so great. much. Thanks for the passion. Thanks for thank you for make me for make me have this moment of goosebump of this project because it, that's it. it's me. It's something that, uh, um, as I said, it's. Um, Sometimes makes me cry. Sometimes makes me, you know, scream. I just want to scream. I just want to go up my window, go like, I, I love that. I love what I'm doing. It's, it's just powerful. We I need that. that. We we need more of that in this world. Is people just doing what makes them happy and what makes them feel good and what makes them help make other people feel good. You know, so it's it's so special. I love that. Jason, did you have a good time? Yes. Did you enjoy the experience? I did. I had a really good time. I think it's so. I have to tell you, your questions. I feel like your questions were perfect. And I don't know if you ask the same questions to everyone, but they were really, really perfect for this. I'll tell you something now. I I have all these questions here in front of me. Yeah, I never select the question for my guests. I thought I strong believe that the right questions come to the right people. And I had so many situations that people crying, people go like, oh my God, will I never talk about that with anyone? And it was here. It was here. So I, they're all mixed, of course. They repeat as well because there are a lot of questions. But of course, they always they, they were I, great. Like I try to, you know, I, I used to do the tarot. I always try to mix a little bit before the interview. Just it's like a magic. Okay, I'm here, and those questions are gonna yeah. come from the right place. So that's uh, that's uh, the the thing. Well, they were yeah. great questions. I mean, if anything, I was trying to 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 to, to keep my answers compacted because I felt like I could talk forever. Uh, about these things. I wanted to keep it focused on things that could actually help whoever's listening and give them some sort of, you know, information to help them. 
but that it, yeah it just felt really like divinely guided the questions and i'm so grateful for the opportunity i will make sure and tell my viewers when i go back in the next i don't know how long it'll be till this actually is on your channel for view but i'll make sure and let my people know James, um, before awesome. we go, before we go, I would like you to share a positive message or a positive quote, something that inspires in life. So I don't know who to attribute this. To. I have a couple of quotes that I, for me, I kind of combine and tell, I tell people this a lot and I kind of live by this quote because I was sort of late in life. I, I awakened a little late in life, you know, for, for, for compared to some. And uh, so it fits my story. And I think it's important for other people to hear this message. And it's basically, um, so I guess it's my quote, but it's two in one. And it's, it's number one, it's, it's always the right time to start to become the person you were always meant to be. It's never too late. It's always the right time. Today is always the right day for that. And it, the reason for that is because wherever there's life, there's always hope. So don't ever think it's too late for you or that your time has passed. The most powerful moment in your life is right now. So if you can be present in this moment, the world is your oyster. Anything is possible, you know? Amazing. Thank you very much. Beautiful. Thank beautiful you people. so much. Thank, Thank you, William. And we keep in touch. We're connected now. Absolutely. Now we are connected. That's it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> subscribe to William to William's channel. It's a great channel. I subscribe yeah, yeah, yeah. the other day and it's really good. Thanks so, so thank much you. for yours as well. Jason, it was All a right. pleasure. Keep in touch. Okay? You too. Have a great day. Thank you so much. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah. So, did you like the show? Don't forget to give a like, to share it, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to be part of the show as well, first, subscribe to our channel, and after that, just go to our website, www.williamandthemagicbox.com and send us a request saying why would you like to be part of the show. And I'll see you there. Bye-bye, see you next time.